Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Jet Talks Bikes. And tonight we are on our way to A and D Motorcycles for a little bit of a post-summer bike night. It is mid to late September. The weather is turning, and this should well be the last bike night of the year for me. And I thought, whilst I'm on the ride down here on this nice little bit of Welsh road, I would do a quick video on the concept and art of counter steer. I'm doing it right now. That's how I'm making it around this bend. So I think it's probably worth caveating this video right from the very start, saying that I am not a professional motorcycle trainer or teacher, I'm not qualified in that area. And if you want to learn to ride a motorcycle, you will be better placed going to a riding school rather than sitting and watching me yammer on about stuff on YouTube. But now I've covered that, that safety briefing. Let's talk about what counter steer is. I think it's safe to say that if you clicked on this video, you don't ride a motorbike because counter steer is one of the first things you're gonna be taught when learning to ride a bike. Um, it's a vital skill, it's how we control a motorbike. And if you're reading about it, so let's say you're getting into riding bikes and you're just finding out all about counter steer and you've read it somewhere, and now you're like, what the heck is counter steer? You've Googled it, hopefully, you've now landed on my video to watch it and I will give you a brief explanation. So counter steer, like I say, is how we control a motorbike. It's how we make it make its turns. I think it's safe to assume that most people who have never ridden a bike will think that to make a bike turn, you just turn the handlebars. If you want to go right, turn the bike right. If you want to go left, turn the bars left and the bike will go that way. And that is the case for slow speed maneuvers, anything under like 10 miles an hour, pottering around a car park, maneuvering on the driveway, that sort of stuff. You would be correct at those speeds, that is how you turn the bike. But hopefully, we're not doing those speeds, are we? We're riding the bike and we should be out on a beautiful flowing twisty road where we're getting up to speed. And in those conditions, if you try and steer the bike like that by just turning the handlebars in the direction you want to go, you're going to have a miserable time. You're going to feel the bike is really stiff, it's really heavy. The bike just doesn't want to go where you're trying to make it go and it's going to feel dangerous and sketchy and tiring and it's just not gonna be a nice experience. And that is all down to physics. Physics, physics, physics. Um, it's the physics of the whole thing. So, what is the physics? What's happening? What is the physics behind it? Well, it's actually to do with gyroscopic forces of the wheels. As we ride in the bike, the wheels are rotating forward. They're pushing, they're pushing, they're going round and round and round. That's all they wanna do. They just wanna stay true and in unison with each other and keep going and they wanna be straight. That's all they wanna be doing. They just wanna stay upright. And the second you put any force or input into these handlebars, it doesn't translate into a turning motion, it translates into a lean. So all the bike wants to do when you interfere with that forward motion of those wheels, it just wants to fall over. It wants to go, ah, oh, crap, and tip into one side. So here's a good example, we're turning right, this is a live example. I am pushing with my right hand. So I'm not turning the bars, I'm pushing away from myself with this hand to make that turn. So by doing that, the bike is trying to fall right. It is trying to fall over to the right-hand side. And by doing that, it generates a turning force. So it's all to do with physics. And it's all a little, it's not voodoo, it's not magic. It is just physics. And out for the left, I push away. With my left hand, the bike tips in. So here's a quick example of this straight road. If I push with my right hand now, we're gonna go closer to the center line. And so on and so forth. So a nice extreme example here of how that works. If you push away, the bike will lean and tip over and it generates that turning force. So that's the, the basics behind it. Now, the little tip for all of it, I would say, are don't overthink it. The chances are, if you uh, ride a push bike, you're already doing it. If you can ride a push bike, you've already been doing it that whole time on that bike. Anytime you've been going over 10 miles an hour on that push bike, you've already been counter steering. Don't overthink it or try to get yourself confused by it. It is a natural thing. It will just feel so natural and easy to do once you've done it a couple of times. You'll just kind of think it's second nature. It is muscle memory. So that would be my first tip, is not to overthink it. The second tip when it comes to counter steering is you don't need a lot of force. So you're not trying to like shove the bike away because the harder you shove it, the faster that bike's gonna lean and turn. So on a road like this, and the way that UK roads and Welsh roads and stuff are designed, we don't have many horrifically sharp hairpin bends on the roads. They tend to be quite long, flowing, sweeping corners because it's safe for everyone. 
So you just need a little bit of force, just the tiniest amount to push away and the bike will start to lean and tip in. So you don't need to kind of absolutely ram it home to make it round a corner. You just need to be smooth with it. And I guess being smooth, <laughs> I guess being smooth would be my third tip. Just be smooth. Just try and flow nicely with the corners, flow nicely with the bike, feel what it's doing underneath you and yeah, it'll just become a natural feeling for you when you're riding the bike. It's a very, very easy thing to, to get overthink and get confused by, but you really don't need to. And what would my last tip be? It, I guess it would just be practice. I guess it would just be going out and practicing counter steering. Get yourself in a nice safe environment and try it a few times. See what the bike does when you apply a little bit of force to the handlebar. See how it tips in. See how you feel as it's doing that turn. Um, so take yourself to a nice safe road that you know and just practice it at a nice steady pace until it feels natural and comfortable. Now the reason why I say to go and practice your counter steering is because we all know it is a life saving tip. Counter steering is taught to us, not just because it's the only way we can steer and control the bike, but because it's a life saving skill when you're on the bike. It's the only way you're going to get the bike to change direction quickly. And we all know that in a blink of an eye, things out on the roads can change very, very fast. Someone could pull out of a blind junction. There could be an object in the road. Someone could try and overtake without seeing you. And you need to know how you're going to make that bike change direction safely and quickly and efficiently without dropping it, without you skidding off into the nearest ditch. And that is what counter steering is going to help you with. So for example, if I'm coming along here and I saw a car pulling out of a junction, I know to get away from it, tip it in, tip it round. So it's going to be your emergency evasive actions. So you need to understand counter steering. It is a life saving skill and it's going to make riding the bike just an absolute shit ton more fun because you're not going to feel like you're fighting it all the time. You know when people say, or you may have read if you're new to bikes and stuff, that people say, get loose. Don't get all tense and nervous and grip onto death grip on the bars and stuff. You've got to be relaxed. Because being relaxed, everything just becomes way easier. All that tension drops away and the bike just wants to keep upright and keep moving forward and nice and straight. And it's any kind of tension or pressure you're putting in, the bike's going to try and fight you on it. So yeah, the better you get at counter steering, the more relaxed hopefully you become, and the more relaxed you become, the easier and more fun the ride gets. So that, in a nutshell, sorry that I'm stuck behind traffic, I'm on a really rubbish road here. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is counter steering, how it works and why we need to learn it and the benefits behind understanding it and doing it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give the video a like. Um, don't forget, if you've not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. I'd go over to Instagram and follow me on there, Jack Talks Bikes. I really would appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully you found this video interesting and I might be able to see you in the next one.